hello everyone and uh, welcome to this lecture on radiographic interpretation of periodontal diseases i am dr lahari here from the department of oral medicine and radiology the learning outcomes of this topic would be to differentiate the types of periodontal diseases identify normal anatomy of crestal bone and general radiographic features of periodontal disease identify the features of horizontal vertical interdental crater buccal or lingual resorption and furcation involvement so periodontitis uh, the clinical classification would divide it into chronic aggressive or periodontitis as a manifestation of systemic disease other forms of periodontitis are necrotizing periodontal disease periodontal abscesses or periodontitis associated with endodontic lesions uh, this is the latest classification of periodontitis which uh, divides uh, periodontitis into severity and categorizes it into um, uh, severe grade 1 2 3 or 4 uh, based on the radiographic bone loss you would see that grade 1 would have a coronal third of the root exposed grade 2 the coronal third of the root is exposed to more than 15 to 33 uh, percent great uh, in 3 stage 3 you would see extending to the middle third of the root and beyond and in stage 4 extending to the middle third of the root and beyond right so um, but of course stage four would have complexity involved with it <clears throat> moving on the radiographic assessment of periodontal conditions is what uh, we'll be looking at in this uh, lecture today the role of radiograph in evaluation of periodontal conditions would be primarily to see the amount of bone present the condition of the alveolar crest bone loss in the furcation areas Withdraw width of the periodontal ligament space, local irritating factors that can increase the risk of periodontal disease, for example, either calculus, which could be visible on the radiograph, and poorly contoured or overextended restorations, which would lead to uh, further increasing the risk of uh, the periodontal occur disease occurrence, root length and morphology, and crown to root ratio open interproximal contacts which may be sites for food impaction anatomic considerations um, like the position of the maxillary sinus in relation to uh, periodontal deformity missing supernumerary impacted and tipped teeth as well as pathologic conditions like caries peripical lesions and root resorption so based on this you would understand that uh, a radiographic assessment of uh, the condition of the periodontium is very important in analyzing the um, factors that would help in diagnosis as well as in treatment planning. So, <clears throat> um, knowing that there are various types of radiographs available, let's look at the uh, types of radiographs and their advantages for specific um, imaging with relation to periodontitis now when you look at intraoral images uh, they provide the best spatial resolution of any imaging modality when it comes to visualizing the teeth so therefore it allows the dentist to detect fine details of the periodontium you can see the lamina dura you could see the um, amount of bone loss in much more detail uh, and especially because it covers a smaller area with more finer spatial uh, higher spatial resolution Bite wing images, um, <clears throat> a type of intraoral images, are primary imaging choice mostly because they uh, accurately depict the distance between the CEJ and the crest of the interdental interradicular alveolar process. The periapical images uh, are useful when you would want to see the full length of the tooth and which allows for evaluation of the percentage of the root affected by bone loss. Along with advantages, there are certain limitations of intraoral images as well. Primarily, they are two-dimensional images. So, you, since the tooth and the periodontium is a three-dimensional structure, sometimes interproximal bony defects cannot be effectively visualized. This happens because of superimposition. So, uh, understanding the uh, pathology uh, which is seen in the radiograph, um, and uh, understanding that there is superimposition is something which you must keep in mind. 
Intraoral images typically show less severe bone loss than it is present actually. Now, what happens is early destructive lesions in the bone do not cause a significant change to be detectable. So, this has hence it's important that there is clinical examination is also done simultaneously. Uh, next, intraoral images do not demonstrate soft tissue to hard tissue relationships. So, you practically do not have any information about the depth of soft tissue pocket. Hence, intraoral examination is a must uh, to determine the exact condition of the uh, periodontal ligament, I mean periodontal uh, condition. Also, bone level is often measured relative to the position of the CEJ. So, if you were to use a CEJ as a benchmark point, then um, this reference point is not valid in situations where there is supra eruption of teeth or where there is passive eruption in patients with severe attrition. So, um, these are some of the uh, limitations of intraoral images. Nevertheless, they are the backbone of uh, diagnosis and treatment planning for any form of dental disease. The panoramic imaging also is very useful for periodontal diseases. This is more useful uh, in cases where there is more than 6 mm bone loss or overall. And also panoramic images are supplemented with selected intraoral images, which is very uh, adequate for periodontal assessment. For example, the image here is showing you multiple areas of bone loss, which is greater than 6 mm. There is vertical bone loss as well as furcation involvement. CBCT images for periodontal diseases are also very useful. These are reserved for more complete assessment of complex vertical defects and craters, uh, as well as furcations and buccal and lingual cortical plate bone loss without superimpositions. So that's the advantage. Um, but again, you must keep in mind that there is uh, uh, radiation involved and hence they are not recommended for routine cases and are reserved for cases where there is periodontal surgical, uh, periodontal surgery involved and complex um, or multiple areas or complex uh, periodontal uh, issues present. So let's look at what normal crestal bone looks like. This is a perfect image to show you how a healthy periodontium on radiograph would look like. The normal crestal bone is about 0.5 to 2 mm below the adjacent CEJ and forms a sharp angle with the lamina dura as you can see in the image here. Altered measurement of bone height like we discussed happens in cases where uh, for example in A where the tooth is either supra erupted or in B where the tooth is attrited and you do not have the CEJ to use as a reference point for amount of um, uh, bone loss that has occurred. So the radiographic evaluation of different stages of periodontitis can be done um, like we discussed in the classification as early stage or stage 1 bone loss which may be defined up to 15% of root length loss uh, I mean a uh, loss of the height up to 15% of the root length or a probing depth of 4 mm or less. In stage 2 periodontitis the bone loss is between 15 to 33% of the root length and probing depth can be up to 5 mm. In stages 3 and 4, the periodontal diseases are defined as bone loss extending to the middle third of the root and beyond and probing depths of 6 mm or more. So early bone changes uh, like in initial periodontal disease is seen as loss of cortical density and rounding of the junction between the alveolar crest and the lamina dura like the uh, uh, image here shown where you can see in, pointed out with the white arrow mark which shows you very uh, a rounded cortical edge and sometimes it may be missed and may not be really uh, captured but that is what we need to look for. This is in comparison to the first image that we have we discussed about normal crestal bone where you, where you could see a sharp angle with the crestal bone and the lamina dura. Horizontal bone loss is uh, <clears throat> bone loss um, which is seen either in the anterior region as in image A and the posterior region as in B and also there is loss of buccal, lingual, cortical plates and the interdental alveolar bone. It is further divided as mild um, when you have loss of about 20% of the bone height or 1 to 2 mm of bone height uh, with CEJ as a reference point and moderate when the loss is up to 20 to 50% bone height, approximately 2 mm, 
or severe when it is greater than 50% bone loss or greater than 2 mm bone loss. Vertical bone defects are uh, defined as three wall defects when they are surrounded by three bony walls. When both the buccal and lingual cortical plates remain intact as you are seeing in image A. Two wall defects when one of these plates can be uh, has been resolved and one wall defect when both the plates have been lost as in B. Uh, now sometimes it can be difficult to detect this using a radiograph alone and it's very important and I have uh, reminded you previously also that it has to be complemented or radiographic imaging is comp has to be uh, supplemented or with the clinical examination or rather the other way around clinical examination needs to be supplemented with uh, radiographic examination to arrive at a complete diagnosis of periodontal diseases. Interproximal crater is a two-walled trough-like depression that develops in the crest of the uh, alveolar process between the edges and teeth as the one you can see here with the um, <clears throat> second molar. Uh, it's like a trough-like depression in the bone. A buccal or lingual cortical plate loss can be um, difficult to you is difficult to understand which is the buccal plate and the ling which is the lingual plate. Again, it has to be complemented with the uh, intraoral examination. But you can make out in the image A and B that one of the plate is lost and the other is still partially intact or or less amount of loss in comparison to the other. This again is uh, due to superimposition of the buccal and the cortical lingual cortical plates. But let, let's talk about osseous deformities in the furcations of multi-rooted teeth. Images A to E show you different amount of bone loss with furcation involvement. If there has been sufficient uh, loss of bone on either the buccal or lingual surfaces of uh, especially mandibular molar furcation, the radiolucent image of the furcation defects become very prominent, that which you can see in image B here very clearly. Periodontal abscess is a rapidly progressing uh, destructive lesion that usually originates in the deep soft tissue periodontal pocket. So clinically, it can be uh, seen as a swelling in the gum of the tooth. But on radiograph, sometimes it's very difficult to make out as a specifically as periodontal abscess. It's difficult to diagnose it and it would look like any other uh, bone loss. Um, if the lesion is acute, again, you may not see any changes in the image on radiograph at all um, because obviously it would take time for radiographic changes to occur, be visible. But if the lesion persists, the radiolucent region, re, uh, region appears, often superimposed over the root of a tooth. Endoperiolesions, um, they are inflammatory lesions from either the periodontal or pulpal origin and may develop independently and merge with one another or one lesion may induce another. Now this is the image you can see of um, a particular case where the molar is showing you a large caries in the occlusal aspect which is involving um, the pulp. There is a broken instrument in one of the root and then there is a periodontal defect as well. You are able to see that at the apex of the root there is radiolucency um, and this particular case was treated with both endodontic treatment and periodontal treatment. Uh, like all cases of endoperio lesions must require both endodontic and periodontic treatment. So you can see in the images following on the right side that there is a root canal treatment done for one of the root and the tooth has been hemisectioned. So, um, so this is one particular case of how an endoperio lesion has been treated. Um, localized aggressive periodontitis leads to severe vertical bone loss. Um, more details of this you would be learning in uh, your periodontology. Uh, but this is an example of how it appears on the radiograph and it's a rapidly progressive um, and aggressive form of periodontitis with severe uh, furcation involvement and bone defects. Now, uh, that brings me nearly to the end of the chapter where it's important to discuss that sometimes on the radiograph, uh, a more dangerous or a severe form of disease like squamous cell carcinoma, the malignancy arising in the uh, oral cavity, one most commonest type of uh, carcinoma in the oral cavity. And, and when it arises on in the alveolar process, it may mimic radiographic appearance of periodontal disease and hence which can delay the diagnosis. So it's very important to understand that when you're seeing ill-defined radiolucency, irregular whitening of PDL, 
a ragged periphery and destruction of uh, uh, the lamina dura, destruction of the bone with ill-defined borders and lack of peripheral sclerotic bone, um, which generally happens in inflammatory disorder, disorders, then you need to view this sort of a case with suspicion. So images A, B, and C here are showing you radiographic loss of bone, which is irregular, and the defects do not correspond to that of periodontitis. There's something more severe. And hence, it's important to keep in mind that you could have certain um, uh, diseases, especially like a squamous cell carcinoma or maybe even Langerhans cell histiocytosis, which could mimic the appearance of periodontitis on the radiograph. And hence, clinical correlation as well as um, <clears throat> therapeutic management is important and follow-up of the patient is very, very important. So these are my references and thank you for uh, listening to this lecture. If you do have any doubts or any case that you would want to share, uh, please get in touch with me. Have a nice day.